Guys, uh, today we're gonna make a very short video about um, uh, changing the hard drive into a MacBook uh, Pro. Um, any MacBook Pro 2000, late 2000, 2013 to uh, late 2015, uh, 13 or 15 inch uh, will have exactly the same process as today. And the reason I'm making uh, this video is because um, as uh, many of you, whomever opened the, the MacBook uh, before, uh, they saw that uh, the MacBook uh, Pro, they do have a proprietary type of uh, solid state drive. It's a blade uh, type uh, solid state. And uh, many of you think that uh, are strictly limited to the, um, uh, to the upgrades which Apple provides you. Uh, and especially since these are a little bit older machines, uh, chances are you're only gonna be able to find uh, Apple SSD which is used. Now SSDs also they have um, a certain lifespan. Uh, you don't know how much uh, it was used, how much data was moved into it, so buying a used drive uh, might be not the best decision. Uh, I'm making this video uh, showing you how to put a regular uh, NVMe type drive uh, which typically uh, most of the modern uh, PCs they have inside and uh, the tools you need to actually uh, make it uh, suitable for your MacBook Pro because uh, the, this type of uh, solid state drive has a slightly different connector than the ones the Apple uses inside. Now, <coughs> for this one, you're gonna need a couple tools besides the regular screwdrivers, a Phillips screwdriver and a P5 uh, tip for your uh, screwdriver. You're also gonna need some sort of um, uh, some sort of uh, uh, SSD reader for this type. Uh, if that, of course, if you don't have the data backed up into an external drive, uh, which will make your life much easier. So if you wanna do a straight up um, cloning of your drive of your internal drive into the new one, you're gonna need one of these guys. It's a NVMe to USB. Uh, type of uh, reader and what you'd want to do uh, pretty much uh, you will plug the this type of drive you're gonna plug it into the, the reader then you hook it up uh, then you're gonna hook uh, this one into your Mac and using a free software like uh, for example uh, carbon copy cloner uh, you can move everything from your old drive into the new drive, including your applications, your uh, system files, uh, operating system, so far and so forth. Uh, if you want to start uh, from scratch, uh, so let's say you already have a backup, which I know most of you have, uh, then one of these readers are not required. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, where, where can I get that kind of reader? You can uh, find it in uh, any uh, big uh, computer store. Uh, say if you have a micro center around you, if you live in New York, uh, b &H, they have it. Uh, you can find it on eBay, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's called uh, M, uh, M uh, key SSD to USB. Uh, okay, so uh, once you clone the, all, the, all the data uh, into, the, into the solid state drive, you're ready to remove the old drive and put this one in. Now, one last thing you need, uh, because I'm going to show you once I open up the computer, I'm going to show you how the connector for the solid state drive, which is already in your, um, in your uh, Mac, uh, differs from the connector this SSD has. So for that, you'll need one of these little guys, which is about uh, $5 on eBay. Uh, just uh, just uh, put in a search terms, uh, NVMe, I mean uh, MacBook Pro to NVMe SSD adapter. So what this one does, <clears throat> this one you see, this type of drive, you're gonna plug it in to this end, just like this pops right in and it will convert to the Apple proprietary connector. That's all you need. You don't have to worry. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the drive fitting because with the adapter, this drive is a little bit shorter than your MacBook Pro drive, but with this adapter, you're gonna have the perfect size. Okay, so without further ado, let's uh, 
let's open your MacBook. As I said, this works for 13 and 15 inch uh, MacBook Pros. Uh, the size it doesn't make any difference in this. So what we're gonna do? <clears throat> All this uh, to 13, all this uh, Retina 13 uh, to 15, uh, they have uh, 10 screws. Uh, you're gonna use a P5, it's a pentalobe screwdriver. If you don't have that, uh, most probably most of the uh, home toolkits you might have, uh, they do not include the P5, uh, but if you have a phone, an iPhone uh, opening uh, toolkit, you'll have, you'll have this tip. Uh, also, a screwdriver can be purchased for about uh, three dollars on Amazon. A standalone screwdriver uh, to open up the screws. Uh, now, once you have the screws removed, you're just gonna pop up the back case of your computer. And uh, by the way, uh, one more thing: in order, which is uh, actually pretty important. Um, I skipped it because I figured that most of you um, have a newer operating system installed into your Mac. However, if you have an operating system which is a prior High Sierra, which is 10.13, uh, the computer will not recognize this type of NVMe drive. So if you want your computer to recognize it, I will highly recommend you to upgrade your operating system either to a High Sierra 10.13, uh, Mojave 10.14 or Catalina 10.15 because when you do that, uh, there's going to be a, a firmware update which will allow the computer to recognize different type of drives. Now also one more thing which is uh, worth mentioning, um, the, the solid state drive in your Mac uh, reads Theoretically, at about 15 to 1700 uh, megabytes a second. These new drives, uh, you can use this one, it's a PNY, it's, uh, it's actually a customer supplied solid state drive. You can get uh, a Samsung uh, Evo, uh, you can get the Pro One, which they advertise speeds. This particular reads at 3500 megabytes and uh, writes at about 3000 megabytes. A second, which you see, it's a big step from the Apple uh, advertised 15 to 1700 megabytes a second. In real life, your computer, especially uh, if it's an older one, 13 or early 14, will not read at, it at its uh, top speed, but nevertheless, you're gonna notice a difference in speed. Um, probably, uh, I never did a test on it, but most probably it's gonna read at about uh, starting at 1900 and it will go up from there, depending on what applications you use. So, um, yeah, but anyways, it will be faster than the Apple uh, drive. Now, uh, let's get back to it. Uh, we're going to remove the back cover of the Mac. And you will see, um, if you want, you can uh, disconnect the battery uh, just to be uh, safe. Make sure that your computer is turned off. So basically, when you work on it, open it up, touch the keys, make sure the computer is not put to sleep. You can uh, disconnect the battery as well as I said. Uh, this is a very, um, it doesn't uh, have any high risks, but still, uh, we're gonna just pop up the battery just like this. It's disconnected, you just use your nails and you're gonna pop up the battery connector, uh, making it, now you're sure that the computer doesn't have any power. Many people, they ask me, oh, why don't you use a, uh, uh, Electrostatic strap and everything, um, it's totally up to you if you want to do it. Um, not required for this particular um, procedure. Okay, now we have, to, uh, we have to find the tip to open the little screw which is holding the hard drive. This is your original solid state drive, right here. Okay, so we're gonna, it's held together by one screw. Okay, we're gonna remove that screw, lift it up just like so, and you see the drive is out. Now I was telling you about the differences between a Mac solid state drive and a PC or an NVMe type of solid state drive. You'll notice that there is a difference not only in size, uh, the NVMe one is slightly shorter, but also the connectors. I'm not sure if you can actually see it. But these are, this is the connector for the Mac one, this is the 
regular NVMe. So that's when this one comes into play, the little adapter, which you're gonna put it in the end of this drive and you will make it fully compatible with your Mac. Okay, so we're gonna insert this guy, make sure it's all the way in <clears throat> because otherwise this drive would be slightly longer and uh, you're not gonna be able to put a screw. Pop it back in, make sure it's fully inserted in the connector. And as you see here, the notch on the solid state drive aligns almost perfectly with the hole for the screw, for the retaining screw. Uh, once we add, once, uh, once we add the screw, you see, it is very flat, it's in place, it is not thicker than this drive, unless you buy one which has a heat sink on it, there's very few of them. Uh, so, so it won't interfere with the back case of the machine. Now that we have this one, by the way, I, I did clone the data um, before I started to make this video, uh, as that step is not necessarily required. It all, as I said, it all depends on your uh, individual scenario. So all the data from this drive, it's already into the solid state drive. Now we're gonna put, we're gonna pop back in the connector, the battery connector. So we're gonna push it down just like this. It is all the way in. Now it's a good time if uh, your computer looks uh, dirty or dusty or anything like that uh, to clean up the fence so you can use uh, a little brush like that just to, <clears throat> just to go on the fins of the fan. And in between also pay close attention to the space in between the, um, in between the fan and the heat sink as a lot of time uh, you're gonna find these guys like little dust bunnies, uh, which they just get stuck in there. So give it a couple uh, strokes over there. And if you have a little um, a compressed, a can of uh, compressed air, it's a good idea to blow it like this. Okay, so all the dust which is inside will go out. We're gonna put back these plastic pieces. We're gonna put back back we're not gonna screw it just yet because I want to make sure that the drive is recognized sometimes uh, we might have a bad drive but uh, well this one was not tested as I mean I know it's working because I was able to move the data but let's see if the Mac will recognize it so we're gonna start the computer up actually this computer needs uh, let's see oh yeah it still has battery so it doesn't need Battery. Now, the first time when you boot it up, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's looking for its original drive, it doesn't find it, and now it's trying to uh, find the different sources for backing up. I mean, for, uh, for starting up the operating system. So, take your time. If you don't see the Apple logo just yet, don't panic. It is normal. And... Uh, now you have the Apple logo, which obviously it tells you that it did find a suitable uh, source for the operating system. It's booting up, you see it's a little bit faster than usual. <clears throat> and let me just put the password. Okay. And boom, you're uh, right in. And now the drive we replaced the original one, it was a 250 gigabytes. This one, it's a one terabyte drive. We're gonna go um, in about this Mac, or you can go into this utility if you want. We're gonna go to storage, and there you go, one terabyte solid state PCI Express drive. And depending on how much storage, you will see a big chunk of empty space right there, which is nice. Uh, you can upgrade up to uh, pretty much two terabytes. Um, they're not expensive. Uh, the used Mac drives are much more expensive actually than a brand new PCI Express drive. So that's gonna save you money and it's gonna give you a boost in uh, in speed and also more storage for your Mac. And that's that. One more step you have to do um, to tell the computer. Um, you have to tell the computer where to pick up the operating system in order to start. So we're gonna go to the Apple logo. Okay, we go to system preferences. And at the system preferences, uh, we will go back uh, to startup disk. Okay, 
So we click on the startup disk. We make we click on this lock. Uh, put your password. Okay. And here, as you see, it sees the drive, but it's not highlighted. So what you have to do, you'll have to click on it. Make sure that it appears with the blue, and then uh, you can exit the system preferences or you can restart the computer whatever you want now the computer will know where to start where to start from so yeah that's about it now we're gonna put back uh, we're gonna shut off the computer we're gonna put the screws back in and your job is done so that's how simple it is it's gonna take you with the cloning uh, if you have one of these guys with the cloning, probably even if you have 500 gigabytes of data, probably it's gonna take you about an hour for the for the cloning. Uh, the installation should take you about 20 minutes or less, and in the end, you're gonna have a souped-up MacBook, which will work uh, better than it was working when you first got it. Um, so yeah, I hope that uh, this video helped you. Um, hope you learned something. Um, it's it's something which is worth uh, trying at home uh, with a very little minimal uh, expense. And if this video helped you in any way, uh, please like it and subscribe to my channel where I try to uh, keep the videos coming uh, as often as I can. Till then, till the next video, take care.